Welcome to Going Fishing with Brett Raymer from Tanked. This is episode number four. Brett, how's it going, buddy? Hey, hey, what's up, JC? It's good to see you. And Agnes, it's such a thank pleasure you, to sit across you. from you. Thank you, JC. Likewise, I appreciate it. So what's the feedback been so far? Everything's fantastic, man. Super excited. Everybody loves it. Uh, you know, we got it on all the platforms so everybody can download it. Yeah. And uh, we're just excited to keep telling everybody our story. It's, we, it's been, for me, it's been really fun just to relive all these memories because you forget so many. So when we get to actually sit here, there's so much more that I want to talk about. I mean, there's only a limited amount of time. Mm -hmm. but it's been absolutely amazing for me. I love this journey. And Boy. the cool the cool thing is, is also getting to go back and watch some of the old episodes. Yes. yes. You know, so it's been a minute since I've seen them all. Um, most people don't even know this, that uh, I never, ever saw an episode prior to an airing. Um, none of us did. None of us did. We didn't get access to that footage. We didn't we, know how it was going to be cut. When they, would you see the episode when when the, when when the, air, when the rest the of the episode. world watched so it? So yeah. they, they did such yeah. a good job. Yeah. The first <laughs> season. Why, you know, why, why mess something it? up? That's not mm -hmm. why ruin it. So we just were like, you know what? You guys are doing such a great job. Yeah. Don't even sweat it. So yeah. during the scenes itself, there would be things that I we wouldn't do, mm -hmm. and that we would edit ourselves within the scene. Yeah. But the final product, we would never see the yeah, final product never. until it aired. So we watched it when everyone else watched it. We we're like, oh, what yeah. are we gonna show? Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah. What about when the show went on hiatus and kind of wrapped up? Did, have, do you ever go back? And I know, you, I know you're watching episodes now for the podcast as we talk about them. But did you go back and watch any episodes or? It's got to be weird when you're clicking through because I think there's some something came out that said somewhere in the world right now there's an episode of Tanked airing somewhere in the world. Correct. Do you stop when you're flicking through and you see yourself? Do you stop and watch the episode? I do sometimes there because certain memories pop up. Just like you know, like you know, from childhood when you have scents that remind you mm -hmm. of certain pleasant things. Obviously, when we watch episodes, in we were all in different mindsets, frames, whatever. Happy, sad. We all had different things going on in our lives, yeah. and we go, "How did I pull that off?" Yeah. Right. I have it set um, on my on my uh, computer, uh, my TV, so mm -hmm. that because I have like you know YouTube TV, you yeah. can set it so that when it comes on, and I, I see it, it's on at least every day. Yeah. So the thumbnail, like it'll pop up as a, as a big thumbnail, and I'll see like Agnes and Redneck on a thumbnail, or myself <laughs> on a thumbnail. It's pretty funny though, and I and I'll watch it once in a while. I'll be like, hey, look, tanks on. Let me check this episode out for a minute. And I'll put it on for 20, 30 minutes, watch it, a little bit of it. You know, walk around the house, listen to it. It's funny. Then myself laughing myself. You know. <laughs> wait, 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 do, you, do you forget like when you're watching an episode? Do you forget that you're like? You're, do you forget what the next scene is? And are you surprising yourself when you watch yeah. an episode after a couple of years? Yeah. Oh, I, I honestly. I, I watch it and some of the lines like I don't even remember I make myself laugh I started giggling I was watching the, I, yes. I was watching a couple yes. of episodes before we came here you know to, to, to catch up and I was literally laughing I was like laughing some of the funny things that we did some of the things that we did it was the way we did it, right? Uh -huh. You know, a lot of things in our show was everything was pretty much realistic. You it was know, there innocent was, back then. It was it was very little stuff that was planned or pre-planned. Everything was done to the point where, like, if we were pranking Wade, <laughs> everyone knew except for Wade. Uh -huh. They we wanted really, the real reactions. We, we, they wanted yeah. real reactions, and that was what they got. So a lot of the stuff that we did, it was funny to us because we were doing it. We were like, oh, my God. But really sometimes we would think we were pranking someone when in reality we were the ones getting pranked. Were, so we, uh, they flip it, it on us. It even, even the producers were in on it, so they were telling us one thing thinking one thing and it what became something Yeah, so else. there was an episode that yeah. uh, in the one of the first episodes, obviously we'll get back to Betty White, but real quick, we had this pinball machine and it was a piece of glass that I was supposed to break, you know, during the pin I knew, but nobody else knew and I was supposed to kind of trip and drop the glass. Mm -hmm. So I tripped and dropped the glass <laughs> and the glass didn't break. <laughs> Yeah, exactly, exactly. So, so everybody's so, like, oh, no, 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 we're supposed to break. And then uh, we laughed at it, and then eventually you'll see in the episode, I actually kind of had to, like, throw the glass to down. To get it to break? To yeah. get it to uh -huh. break. But uh, – it was, that was that was a fun part of, of, of doing stuff was the pranks. We had a good time doing it. Well, today we're going to kind of break down one of those bigger pranks. And today we're breaking down season number six, episode number five, titled Betty White mm. has an app for that. We just mm. recently lost Betty White, a national treasure. You guys had the honor of working with her. And how special was that to work with Betty White? That's amazing, dude. I mean, you know, just got to think about it. I mean, someone that's been in television for 80 yeah. years, mm -hmm. uh, you know, she's like – 
the lady when it comes yes. to you know comedy television yes. i mean there's so much about her it was just such an honor to be in yes. her presence um and just that whole couple of weeks with wade was yes. just him having a crush on betty that i had no idea you know and it just that was all like real like it was yes. if, if it really you really was. watch the show and you really watch when you it, they talk about him. You see him turn red a yeah. lot, and he's really turning red because he—it was true. Well, she's beautiful. You, you yeah. can't number fake, one. You can't fake that, right? Yeah. You can't yeah. fake him like turning red. So he had this like yes. little giggly, yes. giggly crush, and yes. just the whole thing was pretty funny. She, but, go ahead. Complete class act. Yeah. I mean, th not only was she funny, but she was so on point. And just just such a class act. Yeah, that she had I've, no idea about the aquarium. That was a part of it. It was a yeah. surprise. So we didn't really get a chance to meet her up front. Until right. the reveal yeah. day. Until the reveal day. Then afterwards, we were able to hang out with her, meet her, et cetera, et cetera. Well, let's go back to that. I, watching it, it feels like the whole thing is, is a surprise. You guys mm -hmm. go to Denver to visit the Moore's Animal Foundation. Yes. You decide, you decide to build a Noah's Ark-themed tank. And that's when they reveal to you that the tank will be used for the Black Tie Gala that's honoring Betty White in L.A. So was that the first time you heard that Betty White is involved? Did you go to this Morris Foundation thinking you're doing a tank for the Morris Foundation and then they dropped Betty White on you? No, so they knew, they we knew that there was some kind of gala that the tank was going to have mm -hmm. to be moved, but we didn't know any of the particulars. Uh, they were like, they were still working out the particulars. You know, we didn't handle any of the particulars. The production company, the, the network, the back end, they handled all of the back end stuff. So Wade and I kind of just went with the flow. Yeah. But, uh, we didn't have any idea, really, that she was going to really, really be involved until we actually got there. Uh, yeah, because you never really know. I mean, she's she, it's Betty White. She does what she wants. Right. And that, so that, <laughs> that reaction from Wade that we see when they say Betty White, and he's tapping, he's like, Betty, that's, that's yeah. the first time you discover that, that Wade is a diehard Betty White fan. Yeah, like that hard. Yeah, like yeah. really, like you for know, real. like for real. Like, like I mean, it's not like we're sitting around the office going, Wade's going, "Hey, I got these uh, Betty White pictures." <laughs> <laughs> you know? But uh, you know, I mean, there was a lot of things. Like I said, that you know, Wade. Uh, I always joke with people. We go on the road, and I joke with people. I'm like, I always tell people, "We ever see the Betty White episode?" I'm like, "Oh my god, remember the crush that Wade has on yeah. Betty White?" And they're all like, "Yeah, yeah, yeah." I go, "You should see his tattoo on his ass." <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I forgot about that tattoo. <laughs> Oh, oh my god. No, 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 but I remember no. the tattoo, the, the Heather tattoo. Oh my god, yeah. Just <laughs> wait, now hold on. Come on, we're family here. We're no, there was, a, there was a whole other episode. Remember in the beginning where she got the fake tattoo? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Je uh, yes. So it's just, just, it just another episode. Just it's another just, prank. It, it sparks an, it sparks an memory. You know, you shot so many episodes and you've done so much. Remember, we shot 156 episodes. And in some of the episodes in the beginning, the first three or four seasons, there was two people in each episode, right. just like yes. just like Betty White. Betty White had a gentleman by the name of Michael, that was the computer guy from um, I can't remember the name that built our app. I can't remember the name of that company, but uh, either way, um, there was two. So we've had more than 156 right. people. The it's app been tank. you know game pill. Game pill, that's right. It's been 250 yes. people that we've, different episodes or different things, that tanks that we've built because there was two an episode. So, you know, Antonio Brown, there was one, and, you know, Betty White, that happened to be two. But uh, mm -hmm. if we talk about the pranks, though, in that episode, though, when we got the, 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 the guy from Canada, like, everyone knew what was going on except for him, and he was visibly mad. I don't know if you saw that, but he was literally mad, dude. Wait, he, which one? We was smashed like, oh, his the phone. We yes, smashed his yes, phone. Yes, yeah. yes. And, and, and yes. we swapped the phones out, and then we smashed his phone and put the, the other phone in our pocket. I mean, wouldn't you be mad? And he, oh, yes. Can you imagine? And he really, really thought that that was his phone, and the dude was highly upset. Like, I thought he was going to get, like, I thought he was going to cry, but... It was, it was funny. Well, the, the first prank you guys do with, with his phone is I think Wade has it in his pocket. He's pretending to get something out of the tank. The phone falls in, yes. in, into the, the fish wall. tank. And yes. if that happens to anyone's phone, yeah. I would be so angry. He's screwed. Were you ever concerned? Like, what What if he flipped out? What if he's like, screw you guys. I'm out of here. This, what would you do then in that situation? Just tell him. We hey, roll with it. We roll. We roll. We roll. We roll. We roll. They keep rolling. We go, hey, yeah. come back. It's a prank. Hey, come back. Hey, where are you going? Oh, you know. Well, one of my favorite pranks took place during that episode yeah. and that's when you agnes called wade pretending yeah. to be betty white betty white <laughs> right. can we just talk for a second yes. I, we, she, she, okay i come in agnes's office yes. and i'm like agnes we need you to be betty white and the worst and she, she, she first the first she comes with the personation she uses an english accent i'm the 
worst. They came to me. I'm the worst impersonator. But where did that come from? I don't I know, but I, I liked it. I, eventually, I, it came. Eventually, it worked out. Uh, yeah, it did you? Eventually, you, 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 it worked you did a good out. Job. Was, I did a grand job. Don't. You did a grand I did a, job. I did a grand. I did a grand job. And cats me out. The cats me out. <laughs> what the hell? The cats me out. <laughs> because you know, like back in the day, if you like someone, you, you say you do the cats me out. Yes. Uh, yeah. Sure, that's, okay. So that's what I said, and what Funny. it sounded good. Give me some props. I'll give you props. It was this, honestly, <laughs> I couldn't believe that he actually went for it. And what was even funnier was is how the show closed out. I wanted to be honest with the guy and tell him, hey, it was a prank. And I come in the office at the end, and he's on the phone with Betty White. So <laughs> for it real? kind of yeah, fit into. Did, did you, but did, he had he had he, everyone was in on it. Yeah, except everyone, for Wade. Except for Wade. Except for Wade. When did you tell him? Right With, now? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> that's right it. Unless you watched it. Right yeah. Now. Yeah. 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 I don't know. Yeah. Know I don't know. I don't know. If he didn't, watch if he didn't watch it, then he, yeah, then it's now if he's listening. Hi, yeah. Wade. <laughs> Who knows? But you know what? The funny thing is, is that uh, he, he, I don't even know if you believe, like, yeah, 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 it was us. Oh, yeah, wait. Okay, whatever. He was just so excited yeah, about the whole yeah. episode. Just, it was just, I'd never seen Wade like that. Now, yeah. Uh, it was nice. In this episode, you have, I mean, you guys have so many, so many great lines, and they just jump out to me, but it, it, one of my favorite lines is, in this episode, um, you tell, um, you, you tell Wade, you tell, I'm sorry, you tell the app creator that Wade has his own app, and that is an appetite. Oh my God! <laughs> yes, that line. Yeah, yes. this you did it. So yeah, I mean, you he, know, he, look, I love comedy, and he, I just—it's always been me to just be like witty and just come off the cuff with. And things. then once it starts, we can't stop. Rolling. And then yeah, then once it starts, stop. it's over. It's I just I just keep going and going and going. Then but that you know we can. I just want to touch base on something real quick. I don't even remember. I don't think we touched base on this, but when we first started the show, the, I had two producers from Animal Planet that worked for Animal Planet. Mm -hmm. um, because Nancy Glass Productions was teaming up with another production company to film the first couple episodes. I get a phone call from them, and they're like, hey, you know, uh, we need to meet you at Starbucks. So I go down and meet them at Starbucks, and they're like, uh, so we need to talk to you for a minute. I'm like, what's up, guys? Like, you look really serious. And they're like, yeah, we think you know you you're, you're, you're talk about way too much. Like you talk oh, about yeah, his weight, and you're abusing him too much, and like we think that you need to simmer it down. Mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, I'm go. You guys are entitled to your opinion, but I'm like, did you guys ever watch Sanford and Son? And I'm like, did Fred Sanford ever stop calling Lamont dummy? And mm -hmm. they go, no. And I go, that's the same reason why I'm not going to stop. Take care, gentlemen. Have a good day. So mm -hmm. they got fired, and we moved on, and we continued, and that's what we continued through with everything that I saw the show to be was that fun right. family married with children, right. you know, not Orange County child, but not very serious, mm -hmm. but just fun. And that's what we it was did. Because you guys, I mean, it you, you were a family, and that's and, and that's what and it, that's what all families exactly, do. Let's be real exactly. here. Let's, okay, families let's be real. They, they bust each other's chops. Yeah. They have fun. At the end yeah. of the day, they love yeah. each other. And they know yeah. we're just joking around, yeah. and having a good time. Yes. And I watch Orange County Choppers a lot. Love those guys. Mm -hmm. You know, great guys. But they were a little bit mean to each other. Yeah. You know, and they were a little bit that when I that's their show is the reason why we have a show. I would watch that show mm -hmm. and be like, I could do that. You know, mm -hmm. but. I was like, I could do that with married with children, and we could be a lot yeah. family or friendly and fun, and that's kind of what I but wanted. It was to never hear. came across as malicious. Any, no, any of your we pranks never, or no. jokes, no. And, and then there was, you, it was never like passive aggressive. Yes, meaning yeah. that way, it was really we all knew it was a joke. Mm -hmm. You know, it was it was it was never like no. never ever was it taken that way. So no. it was it was fun, and then so many jokes would come out of those jokes. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> for sure. Just, now in this episode, so you're building this tank, the Noah's Ark tank for Betty White for the yeah. gala. The, the the company's based in Denver, but you're doing the build in LA. After the gala, do you di disassemble that tank and then take it back to Denver yeah. and, and, and rebuild it? Is that the first time you ever did a dual location build? We didn't do it on the show as a dual location. Mm -hmm. um, and we've moved tanks before. Um, we weren't a part of the move, Brett and Wade. You know, that was done outside with okay. our company. We packed it up, had it shipped off to Denver, sent the crew out there, had them, you know, reinstall it um, and get it reset back up. But uh We've done that multiple times, you know, where we've had live events like the convention center here before, mm -hmm. you know, you have a lot of times where we've done tanks for the convention center. You want to have a booth. Phone booth tank. A phone booth tank. Mm -hmm. you, okay. you set it up in the convention, et cetera, et cetera, and then break it down and bring it somewhere else, bring it back to the shop and set it back up. So it's a common thing. Yeah, it was mm -hmm. a common thing in the, in, the, in the aquarium world. The other, in this Betty White episode, the other storyline is that you guys get your own app. Yeah. yeah. Is the app still around? What happened to the app? Was it a successful app? Did it bomb? Unfortunately, it's the... The Animal Planet's app. Okay, yeah. um, it's, it's not Brett and Wade's app or Agnes. Yeah. So otherwise, we'd be. I'll making, get an Agnes app though. Now we got a we got a we got a little piece of the app, you know. But the app is still out there. It's called the Tanked app. Um, you could 
you know, download it. Uh, maybe my might, might be a buck. I don't know, but you know, you build your own aquarium. It was cool. You interact with Brett and Wade. Um, yeah, it was it was a cool concept. It was a cool idea. Um, I think the app could have been pushed a little bit more. But the long story short is, it, it, it is what it is, and uh, I'm glad we were able to do it. Yeah. Um, this show has enabled me and the people that I brought into the show to do things in our life that we never would have been able to do without the show. Mm -hmm. Meeting celebrities, having apps. We have our own video. Um, we actually created our own. Oh we'll we're going to talk about the Akon episode uh, down the road, mm -hmm. but... I actually, Wade and I have yeah, a, a uh, it's called Fish, we, we created a, 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 a video, it's called Fish Better Have My Money. I better, I forgot. And you know, it's a playoff on the Rihanna song, right? Uh -huh. well, I think that's oh, one of those songs. God, but, I know which song. But yeah, uh -huh. so yeah. The, the thing is, we've done so much because of this show, met so many people like Betty White, you know, Antonio mm -hmm. Brown. I mean, the list just goes on and on and on. And that is worth more than any dollar we made. It's legacy, right? Mm -hmm. We've built a legacy. We have 156 episodes that when I'm no longer here anymore on this planet, that people are still gonna be able to watch forever. And to me, that, that was super important, you know? What was it like that moment when you met Betty White? The, the tank build was a success. You set it up, the Noah's Ark theme, two of each fish. Betty White shows up to the gala. I mean, a couple of hiccups along the way. But what was that? Was that the first time you met her when she, when she was yeah. escorted into the into the ballroom? Yeah, it was pretty exciting. You know, I mean, the ambiance. I mean, having somebody like that with the presence of walking in. Now you got to remember. We did this, I think, in 2013. Mm -hmm. So yes. we're talking about, uh, you know, nine years ago. Yeah. So she was 90. Yeah. 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 For her to remember that she had five aquariums and that she used to work for her aquariums yes. and the things that she was talking about, to me, was just incredible. You know, I, I lost my grandmother last year, 94, mm. uh, during the pandemic because of boredom, right? Yeah. She was home all the time. Loneliness. And she just, loneliness, she just basically, you know, fell one day and didn't have anybody there for her. And, you know, Ugh. and she was living by herself and she was doing fine. She was driving. My grandma was doing great. But... To see, you know, it reminded me of my grandma, you know, it just, yeah. when I saw Betty White, you know, having that grandma feeling and being able to be in the room with a legacy like that, knowing that Brett and Wade were actually in the room with somebody like that, to me, that was legendary. Yeah. So now did you guys hang out the entire, so we saw the episode, yeah. you kind of wrapped with her seeing the tank. It was fantastic. You guys look great in your tuxedos, by the way. Um, did you hang out that night at the gala? And what was that like? Yeah, we got to stay and hang out and get to eat some food and listen to the video and see, you know, she has been with them for 40 years. Yeah. yeah. So they had shown the video, you know, back in the day and just of, of, of what the foundation does and all the p things that they have done. But the Morris Foundation does some amazing things for animals. So, and she's with them for, like I said, she's been an animal lover her whole life. So for us, that's big. And, you know, Wade is a much bigger, I love animals, but oh Wade is God. a much bigger animal lover than I am. Mm -hmm. I mean, Everything. every animal Everything. that you could ever imagine the guy loves. We've, we've we had, had in our shop. 5,000 birds and, you know, we had this and dogs snakes. and snakes. Was, and, we have a pig. You know, um, so I think he related to yeah. that part of her a lot more than I did. Um, I loved her for, you know, her television work and what yeah. she did over the years made me laugh and her comedy. I was so enthralled yeah. by what she did with the Golden Girls, you mm -hmm. know, the comedy of those those guys. And she was the last Golden Girl to yeah. Yeah. To, to, to go. So that was a, an era of us growing up. And to me, to be able to be on screen with the Betty White, mm -hmm. legendary. What was yeah. it like for you, Agnes, that night I, and, and being with her and spending that evening well, with her? I didn't get – that was only – that they the, they were the only ones that got to go and only a few uh, – only our executive producer, Matt Carter, and um, a few producers because that was a, such a oh, very – Oh, okay. All right. yeah. We were a part of it as in the shop as far as, you know, with the pranks yeah. and everything. But when – I remember when everyone got back from that, they were – I said, how you know, how was Betty White? And everyone had just – just what I always figured because I had always been such an admirer of her because she was such a classy lady, but it was also funny and like she was a ball buster, you know, mm -hmm. she, re that's what I loved about her. And she was so, just a heart, such a hard worker. And I said, so, you know, at her age, how did she do, you know, how, how was it? And I remember Jeff telling me, he's like, she was just, did not miss a beat. She did not miss a step. She did not miss a line. She knew exactly, you know, exactly wow. she, at that age mm -hmm. to be able to do that. You know, and just not miss a beat is incredible to me. So I'm really – when I heard that she, you know, passed, I was just sad. I was yeah. – like, it's like you're everyone's grandma, you know. You grew yeah. up with her, and she's just lovable. And and the fact that we – even the little bit that we got to experience in, throughout the shop with her was just a, a great moment for all of us. So I I loved it, and I'm, I'm sad that she's gone. Like I said, doing this show has – 
brought us in front of icons, celebrities, athletes, you know, regular Joes, you know, people that have been sick, police officers, military. I mean, you name it. This show has taken us around the world. It's done so much for us. But uh, like I said, you know, we we were doing this episode now because we're playing a tribute to a legend. And uh, like I said, to live to 100, uh, we all should only be, you know, three quarters of that lucky, right? Because that's that's an amazing, amazing feat to live to 100 years old. Um, And we were able to be a part of her 100 years. You know, we had a segment of her life. Little piece, little tiny. That's something that we can show forever, Mm -hmm. you know, and that to me is just amazing. You know, that in itself, like I told people what they asked me one thing that I loved about the show the most. And to me, it's legacy, right? At the end of the day, I have something that I could leave forever Mm -hmm. in the fish world. You know, you can always talk, they're always going to talk about that show tanks because there's never going to be anything like it. Nope. One of a kind. Yeah. And to me, obviously when we talk about Betty White, it's a, you know, when you tie it all in, and we talk about legacy and just the, the things that we got to experience. The, the 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 phrase "Thank you for being a friend" really just brings a lot sure. to me mm-hmm. too. It's it's been a crazy ride. <laughs> yeah, it is. It is. You know, they, like we talked about in episode one. You know, just from the beginning to where we were at to when you know it was a joke, like the family joke, to being able to go from nothing to being in the room with some of the world's biggest athletes, the world's biggest entertainers, the world's biggest singers, country stars. I mean, it's incredible. I mean, JC, look, you know it too, man. You're in that, you're yeah, in our you're industry, in you interview it, <laughs> you're around celebrities too. I mean, you, your career has brought you to that point where yeah. you're, you've enabled you to do that. And this is like for us, we've taken, we took an aquarium building company and turned it into an entertainment, you know, mogul worldwide. You know, we were, we entertain people in 190 countries in 35 different languages and, you know, millions and millions and millions of people. And that to me was, was something that all of us should be proud of. And this episode was great because we were able to do it with the legend. Well, I think you should too be proud of yourselves to be the line. Thank you for being a friend. I mean, people that watch the show, you're, you know, I've met you for the first time, Magnus, episode number one, but yeah, I now I like follow you on Instagram. I'm like, you do all this cool shit. I'm like, oh, that's just so awesome. But I feel like I'm like, you became part of my family yeah, watching right. that show. And you, ha- I'm, I'm sure you guys know this, but there's, you know, I, I'm having a rough week. I, I can watch Tanked, and there's my family. There's my friends. There's Brett, my brother, yeah. and Wade making fun of each right. other. There's you and Heather, and it's you. I think you entered people's homes yeah. through that. You still do with uh, with the uh, repeats and reruns, and you entered through people's homes and became a part of everyone's family and, and people's friends all around the world. That's it's, like that's like late night, late at night. I'd go like tired. You know, just yeah. want, you uh, you're so tired. You would zone out, right? Mm-hmm. Just like you were saying. Yeah, I'd watch Golden Girls, you know, and read my whatever sloppy ramen or whatever uh-huh. in, the, in the room or whatever but it's just because it's just comforting right so mm. it was it's just it, it's the same the, thing the funny thing about the show is what you just said is like you know like you you met agnes for the first time when we shot our first podcast but you felt like you knew her already absolutely yeah, yeah. yeah. and the thing is is that all the time like i'll be walking i'll be out of state and i'll be walking and someone will come up to me and they know they know me and they're like bowling tuesday nights right <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and I'm like, no, I don't know, man. I'm sorry. And then they're like, I'm sorry. I've been staring at you. But I honestly, I feel like you've been part of my life. Like, I know you. I've had girls come over to me and go, have I dated you before? Because really? you look so familiar Oh, my to God. Me. That could get you in trouble, and, too. Yeah. But long story short is I go, I tell them the show tank. They're like, oh, my God. I love your show. You know, it's so you guys. We watch it every episode. I mean, when you watch 100, remember, eight years we were on. Yeah. So you watch us for eight years. We're a part of your family. And that's what happened. And that's what Agnes, myself, and you were trying to do. We're trying to keep the spirit going. And uh, we're going to be here every week. And we're going to recap. And we're going to talk about yeah. episodes. And we're going to try to give people the uh, tank magic, but except via video. Well, yeah. we do have, uh, this is episode number four, and the first three episodes were hit, and I do have a couple questions that people sent in. I found stuff on social media. So before we wrap up, these are fans, uh, fan oh. questions oh. that were sent in. I'm going to throw you guys okay. ways. Do me a favor, though, Agnes, and turn that mic. Oh, got it. That's got the, it. It's the I radio. Know, it's the ra- I know. I'm sorry. I'm so I'm used to the cameras. Your TV stars. I, no, no. That's right. I know. Sorry. Okay. I'll get used to it, Andrew. Don't worry. Uh, let's see here. Some of these may be repeats and everything, but um, so you mentioned in the first podcast that you became stars overnight. What was the biggest change in your life after the first season? Like I said, I think recognizing us in public, um, 
when the first show came out, my kids, it was my kids, uh, school. We were shopping at Tilly's and I told my kids, I go from this day on, I go episode out last night. Our life is going to change forever. And my kids, you got to remember it's 12 years ago. 13, my, my daughter's 12 and my son is like five and they're like, shut up dad. And I get out of the car and the first thing they say, like, Oh my God, there's the guy from the show that we watched last uh-huh. night. So that was kind of, it was funny that it happened the first day. That was kind of like the moment I think that I realized like, wow, I, the power of television mm-hmm. and what it can do. Yeah, for me it was um, because I, like I said earlier, I'm I like I like being creative, and so for me it was um, seeing something from nothing, like it was literally an idea. Just it was just a brainstorm idea with that you know people, people, our, everyone came up with. Yeah, and then when you watch the final product, to think, wow, I had a piece of this, and and then when when ev- when that hit the world. You know, and everyone came and there were so many, you know, reactions to it or whatever it may be from whatever country to think, wow, I had a little piece in that. That was my, that was what I loved about it. It was just knowing taking something from zero to to a finished product and being a part of that. That was my joy. And watch that too. Sometimes you guys be brainstorming and mention, let's build this. I'm like, what the heck? Uh, that we did too. About? Yeah. And all of a sudden, yeah. then within 60 minutes, it is done. Yeah. Yeah. Well, 60 oh, minutes. Yeah, yeah, right. It only took 60 minutes. 60 hours. 60 minutes. <laughs> you know, the funny thing is, is I, like you talk about the big time I made it. The, the, the one time when I really, I really know that we were big was when we went to Dubai and oh. we're in the middle of filming in Dubai. Mm-hmm. And we're actually filming, and then there's two Arab gentlemen in full garb, you know, turbans, the, the, the full outfits and all. And while we're in the middle of filming, they walk up, and the one guy's like, oh, my God, I can't believe it. It's my uh, my favorite guy from television. What are you doing here in Dubai? I love your Aquarius. He goes, you, you're the funniest guy ever. This guy, you make fun of this guy. Like, oh, but no. And you got to remember, we're filming. Like, uh-huh. literally, we're right in the middle of film. So all this is on camera. I'm laughing. I'm like sitting there going to wait. I go, wait, I cannot believe this guy. And he starts naming episodes. Oh, gosh. Yeah. At that point, yeah. I knew. I'm like, dude, we're in Dubai yeah. filming. Yeah. And we have this guy in Dubai coming. I was naming episodes. I go, we made it. That's it. That yeah. was that was when I was like, man, it's crazy, you know? But that was that was a fun, fun, fun time. Yeah, that's. In the uh, in the first podcast, you talked about the the um, the pilot and the Chris Angel tank that you guys built. Oh, and, yeah. and that went south. And you had to get. What happened? So I want to know what happened to the Chris Angel tank. So we refurbed it. And we put it into a friend of ours, uh, uncle's house. Um, he was kind enough to basically let us use his house in, in uh, I believe it was Spanish trails. And he had an amazing house. And he was like, yeah, it'll go great in my in my family room. And we were able to put it in his family room. Yeah. So it went to good use then. Yeah. Right. Mm-hmm. Richie mentioned, I think so on uh, episode number two, Richie mentioned that there was a competing show on Nat Geo. It was the Fish Tank Kings. Oh, yeah. yeah. Were there other tank shows that try to come on the air and come after you guys? Just those, just those yeah, I two. Think that, I think just that one, yeah. Yeah, I think just that yeah. one, just the Fish Tank Kings. That was it. It lasted like three or four seasons and then fizzled out. That was it? That was it. When you go shopping for fish, and I feel like, uh, Agnes, you did that a lot. Oh, we have, remember Heather had a blast. You did. We had a blast. Like did you have a budget for each client of like, you have X amount of dollars to spend on fish? Yes. there's a, Well, there was a budget. That yeah. Was... I mean, the thing is, is that the, once again, the network took care mm-hmm. of the majority of the bills and mm-hmm. the fish, et cetera, et cetera. We needed enough fish to make the aquariums look amazing. Yeah. Right, so whatever we did, if if the but if we if there was a thousand dollar budget, and we filled the tank up, and the tank wasn't good enough for camera, we would add another thousand. Yeah, okay. you know? mm-hmm. we'd have right. to make it look good for camera. And then once the cameras were off, the fish got taken out, things got you know done down, the tanks got set back to normal. You know, just we did a lot of different things to make sure the safety of the fish were our first priority. Mm-hmm. One of my favorite characters is when you guys would go to sea-dwelling creatures. Yes, in and, L.A. Yes. It Those was, were our funnest trips. And deal with Paul. The, Paul, the, oh, my God. Very Paul. descriptive, very descriptive when it came to describing Paul fish. Paul was Harry. a trip, man. Paul's a great guy. He's a great guy. He's a great guy. Does he really? He, yes. yes. They are good yes. guys. Speak to Paul yes. every once in a yes. while. But uh, Sea Dwelling, sea Dwelling is a great company. Uh, they still have amazing fish. Uh, we worked with the owners, you know, Eric, Scott, and uh, Paul was one of the workers. But yeah. uh, he was great. In the beginning, you know, Wade and I did a lot of the fish shopping, and it got to the point where we were just so overwhelmed with mm-hmm. traveling and filming and uh, wanted to get the girls into the episode more. And mm-hmm. what better way than shopping, right? Yeah, right, yeah. And, we, and we had a blast. Yeah. I mean, we, had, we had so much fun. And they fun. would film we, like five episodes in one day. 
Yeah. It so was. They, they were long shopping. days. They were long days. Yeah, they, they fly to long. L.A. Yeah. and then they go. Okay, we're looking for this fish. This fish. This fish for this and, episode. Yeah. And then they would go and film that episode. Then they would film the next episode. Uh, and the next and episode. then it'd be. And it wasn't like we just did one episode an hour here, and it was flipping back and forth between different episodes. It was. They had the fish it was. Set up yeah. Places throughout Thre- the threats. place. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. That's how we got it's like crafty over time. We started learning the ropes, yeah. setting things up so that so we can do it. So it quicker. And then boom, 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 boom. So everybody's yeah. time wasn't wasted. Yeah, and then we jump back on a plane and celebrate at the airport. <laughs> <laughs> We I mean, had to celebrate, right? Absolutely, I mean, dude. Mind. After a long day like that of fish shopping, it's a from like six a.m. start. Yeah, like yeah. six a.m. We'd go till like eight, nine, right? Yeah, because we leave get Vegas. Home. They leave Vegas and yeah. they fly there. Go because yeah. it's right by the airport. Yeah, yeah. drop off in L.A., mm-hmm. film all day, and then fly back. Well, I'm sorry yeah. if, I, if I am because you had celebrities also just you know your average person you're and building a tank for. But if I have you in my house and you're revealing my fish tank, yeah. I'm sorry, we're partying, we're having a celebration. Right, exactly. Yeah. And time. you know, you're, and it's and it's real. It's like musty in there. <laughs> it's like you're trying not to sweat. <laughs> nope. It's wet. You're wearing boots. Yeah. I mean, it's it's just like it's hot because it's you know it's so cal. It's yeah. it's a big warehouse. Humid. But it's humid. I'm looking through, I'm concerned about my hair. You know, this one's never concerned about <laughs> no. his hair. So I'm like, oh my god, Heather. She's like. It was, but it was such a great time. It became so fun. I love this question. Uh, it's the last one here. What is your favorite fish to work with and your least favorite fish to work with? Um, I would say my, well, my favorite personal fish is I like a clown trigger. Uh, I like the colors on them. I like that they're aggressive. They're, they're cool, cool looking fish. They're hardy. Um, but I think, I think just working learning about all the yeah. different kinds of fish mm-hmm. you know everything from freshwater to sharks to stingrays we were able to learn about all of this the show enabled us to give education so you know like just like an actor or anybody else mm-hmm. that's doing a movie we have to study a script to learn about things like i didn't know about every fish under the sun mm-hmm. i had to learn about mm-hmm. it in order for me to talk to you intelligently i had to learn about it so mm-hmm. i was able to learn about a lot of these fish and which eventually made me a fish expert right yeah so yeah, yeah. That's how you learn, you know, just the show was, was, was great for that. So for me, so for me too, because I really fell in love with natural reef tanks. We had a big reef tank in there. Mm-hmm. And I remember I'd go out there before we'd film a lot. We'd film a lot in the shop with where the fish were. And I'd go to the reef tank and there'd be these little tiny, tiny shrimp. And I go, wait, what's that shrimp called? And he's called, it's called a sexy shrimp, right? Oh. It's, a little, it's a little, have you, have you seen this shrimp? The sexy shrimp? Yeah. No. It's so it's it's literally it's tiny. tiny. It was like the sea monkeys would have his yeah, it's a kid. So, that it's tiny, so cute. It is so cute. And I'm like, it's really called the sexy shrimp. He's uh-huh. like, Yeah, it's called the sexy shrimp. I'm like, oh my god, it's like that would that be so I that to me was like mesmerized because it was so tiny. Yeah. And so pretty. It's just like and then my least one was the the big I mean, the eels we had. Yeah, we had some big Oh my eels. god. Did you see the eels we had? Oh but eels? You guys did scorpions? Oh I mean, my god. Stuff you deal they with. were just I remember when we first I first started working there, we had those eels, and then over all those years, how big those they eels got, got. And we had to we fed them. They were they scared they scared the, the living look on your face right now is they, like they, no, grotesque. Because yeah. this was afraid of sharks, <laughs> snakes. Did you you know yeah, he's afraid of snakes? snakes? Like he's deathly yeah. afraid of really? snakes. Deathly, deathly. I, deathly. I mean, I, I cured my fears a little bit. I had went to a couple of these conventions recently. Uh-huh. Put some big snakes on me just like for a couple of seconds. Oh, like, you uh, did? I think I saw. Yeah, yeah. Like so on, on social media, but uh, yeah, my the, real goal is is I don't know if you know this guy. His name's Jay. It's called Jay's Prehistorics. He's got if you look him up, he's from California. Uh-huh. This guy's got a shop, and I mean, his he gets 20, 30, 40, 50 million views because all he does is snakes and alligators. He's got like 30 foot pythons. I'm going to have to try to go there and cure my oh fears. My no. No. Well, that'll be an no. episode of the podcast. Oh, for sure. No. We'll, we'll film that and everything. I want to do it like sexy Britney Spears style. Remember oh, yeah. That? Remember that outfit when we shared that? Yeah, snake? absolutely. Um. absolutely. <laughs> well, I think that'll do it for, for episode number four. And, and uh, Betty White, we lost a, a national treasure, and you guys had the honor of working with her and had to be very special. Definitely yep. very special. And, uh, uh, you know, rip Betty White, and uh, it was just an amazing opportunity to to be able to work with her and to say that uh, we work with the legends. So, yep. thanks for that. Absolutely, awesome. thank you. We're back next week with episode number five. Thank you, yeah, guys. Yeah, thanks. Yeah. <laughs>